Okay, cool. So, uh, this is going to be a quick tutorial video to try to um, show people how to set up asymptote in LaTeX because uh, this is a uh, FAQ I've gotten so many times that I just like, okay, I'm just going to try to do this once properly on stream, upload this video to YouTube, and then hopefully never answer this question again, even though, let's be real, people are going to ask me anyways. So, um, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to do everything in a terminal here. And the reason I want to do it in the terminal is so that you can actually see what's going on. Um, if you use higher level tools, like if you have a fancy like text suite editor or God forbid you're using Overleaf, um, it will hide all these processes from you so you have no idea what's going on. And I specifically want to uh, avoid that. So um, before we start, here's a terminal and an empty folder. And the first thing you should do is you should make sure you actually have both LaTeX and Asymptote installed on your computer. Because if you don't, I mean, this is obviously not going to work. Um, and you can check is I'm going to type PDF LaTeX version. And this will print the current version of LaTeX that's on my computer. So if this command works, you have LaTeX installed. If not, you don't. Go fix that now. Um, secondly, I'm going to make sure Asymptote itself is installed. Um, again, ASCII version. And it should print a version, blah, blah, blah. And so if you get something that looks like this, you're good to go. Uh, if you get an error message that says like command not found, um, go look up however you install asymptote on whatever operating system you're using. Um, we're going to assume that you have both of these commands available because if you don't, this is obvious, you know, nothing's going to happen. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to compile a normal LaTeX document without the asymptote so you can make sure that you understand that process. So I'm going to create a file that says, uh, I need a file name, um, meow. All right, so we're going to create a file called meow.tech. So you can see in your folder, um, yeah, meow.tech. And you have begin document, uh, shit, how, how does this work? 11 point article, uh, meow, Twitch, so I don't know. It doesn't matter. So here's the document, meow.tech looks like this. And the way I can compile it is I can write PDF LaTeX meow. And this will generate a bunch of files, most notably a PDF file called meow.pdf. You open it, uh, it looks like this, all right? So this is just a normal LaTeX document. Nothing fancy has happened yet. Um, okay, so now I'm going to try to include my first diagram. And the way we're going to start is I'm going to type the words use package asymptote to include the asymptote package. And then I'm going to create an ASCII environment here um, like this. And we'll do the following size, six centimeters, and we're just going to draw a circle, all right? Um, actually, we can draw a little more than a circle. I don't know. Uh, 0 0.3. I'm going to draw two line segments as well. We'll, we'll see how my artistic abilities turn out. Uh, Uh, whatever. It, it doesn't actually matter what these commands are. This is just a stupid example. Uh, okay, so now if you run LaTeX again um, on this file, so, you know, stuff will happen. And what you'll see is that there is no picture yet. Okay, I want to make this very clear. The first time you run LaTeX, you don't get any picture yet. The file looks exactly the same, and in fact, if you look at the log file, it'll say, you know, package asymptote warning meow one dot pdf not found. So what's changed is that if you look inside the directory, um, there's a new file that wasn't there before. It's this file that's called meow dash one dot assy. And what this means is this is the first asymptote picture um, in your document. So in order to get asymptote to do anything, what I need to do is I need to separately run a process assy meow. Okay, let me show you what's inside here, actually. If you open the file, it looks like this. So there's like a bunch of boilerplate, and then there's the stupid code that I actually drew. So to convert this file into a picture, what I do is I type the command asci meow dash one dot asci, run the command. And when I do that, um, it'll generate the, in the folder, you'll see there's now a new PDF file called meow dash one dot PDF. That is the compiled output of, wow, I'm really bad at drawing smiley faces. That, that doesn't look like what I wanted to do. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, we're doing it live. Uh, you know, that diagram looks like this. And then you go back and run PDF LaTeX meow again. So you have to run LaTeX a second time. 
and now in the picture you'll get this wonderful smiley face. So to reiterate, the way this workflow looks is um, you run LaTeX once, it generates a dash one file or dash two, dash three as you add more and more pictures. You run asymptote on this file. That's this command over here. There's no output here. It just silently runs. And then you run LaTeX again now that you actually have the picture in your folder. Okay, so there's that's how you can draw a smiley face. Um, there's a couple things that this leaves to be desired. One is that this is really, really obnoxious. You can tell that this is going to get annoying really fast because every time you run the document, you know, you edit this picture. You know, if I'm like, oh, this is not a really good smiley face, I want to, you know, make the eyes a little lower. So we'll, you know, we'll do that or something. Uh, and we, you know, the the smile looks a little too narrow. We'd we'd like it to have more of a big smile. Okay. Um, you know, I changed this diagram. In order to make this work, I would, in theory, have to run like three different commands. I need to um, update this file and then actually compile the image and then, you know, run LaTeX again and to, in order to get the updated smiley face. Um, so the good news is that there is this tool called LaTeX MK. I won't say too much about it here, but um, you may or may not already have this installed depending on what operating system you use. And wow, that's a really long help file. Um, what the LaTeX MK does is that it will autom automate this entire process for you. So you only type one command, LaTeX MK meow, and it will run all three steps of the process for you at once. So you don't have to manually type three commands. Um, this is especially nice if you have like, you know, 30 pictures instead of one, instead of just one, because it'll automatically update only whatever pictures changed, yada, yada. So um, yeah, if you, want to not have to deal with this like manually updating crap, this is the command you want to look up how to use. Um, you will need to set up a configuration file that will tell you what the how the asymptote compiles. I'll show you what mine looks like actually. Um, this is a little advanced, so I don't want to say too much about it, but you know, these are like these magic lines that I've added that will do this for you. So I'm just going to outline that briefly. And if you want to read more about this, go read about it. Um, the other thing is some of you I know are specifically interested in Olympia geometry. And um, for example, maybe you have like, uh, I don't know, maybe you have a triangle, okay? Pair A equals dir 110, pair B equals dir. So here's like a freaking triangle. We're gonna make the size so it's not too small. So yeah, I can draw a triangle and that's fine. And I wanna draw the circumcircle of this triangle. Uh, so I'm gonna use the magic command now just so you can see how much less annoying it is. Um, okay, so here's your triangle. And if you wanted to draw the, like, the circle of three points manually, you know, it would be a lot of really annoying code. And the solution to this in 2003 was in 2003, um, some AOPsers wrote their own library of geometry functions called olympia.asci and cse5.asci. And um, those libraries are on AOPs. The problem is that these libraries are like extremely not standard because they were written by AOPsers in freaking 2003. Um, so chances are you don't have them installed on your computer already, or you probably wouldn't be watching this video to begin with. And um, the installation process is like probably kind of annoying because it, it's like not a standard package. So what you can do instead is um, if you go to, let's, I don't remember where I put it actually. Uh, all right, let, let's let's find my web page, okay? Uh, FAQ, LaTeX. CSE. Okay, never mind, we'll go here. Um, so, you know, I had this problem too, and I decided that I'm just gonna write my own code that I can put wherever I need it so that I don't have to keep doing this over and over. So let me take this chunk of code here. So there's this chunk of code that you can get from my website that looks like this. It's under this thing that says ASCII def. And if you look inside the source, um, this is this will do basically everything the AOPS libraries can do, except it's shorter and um, less hacked together. So what you can do is you can paste this entire blob um, inside your preamble of your document. 
if you are more advanced with LaTeX and you're using Evan.sty, this will get included automatically. But um, I'm assuming those people aren't watching this video. And once you have it in here, um, you get a bunch of new commands, most notably, for example, circumcircle. So now I can just try draw circumcircle ABC. Uh, and then um, LaTeX will compile and boom, I get a circumcircle. So if you're specifically interested in Olympia geometry, um, you should include probably this blob of code so that, you know, you can draw circumcircles by just typing the three points instead of having to manually compute the Cartesian coordinates of the circumcenter, which would be obnoxious as heck. Um, yeah, okay. Um, yeah. And I guess one last thing, probably most of you in practice want to put these in centers so that they're center aligned instead of just being aligned on the left. So I'm gonna do that. Begin center and center. Ta-da. Okay. Um, all right, so. All right, that concludes the um, video thing. Uh, hopefully this was like remotely helpful in some way. Um, I would say if you have questions, leave a comment, but honestly, if you email me, it's probably easier because YouTube comments are not something I check very regularly. <laughs> uh, also, if you are in one of my discords, um, there are a lot of tech support channels in all of them and there will be probably more people who can um, you know, help you figure stuff out like the process of trying to install software on windows which is a freaking nightmare and something i'm glad that i haven't had to do in a really long time okay thank you for watching uh that yeah that's it cut 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 okay cool